So in the last few videos, we've been working a little bit more with MIDI. And I do want to show you guys there are some other views that you may find very helpful when it comes time to actually work and edit and arrange and record MIDI data. Uh, so far, we've just been working with what Cubase calls the key editor. I call this a piano roll because it looks like uh, an old-timey you know, piano roll, right? You have uh, basically punch out, you have a sheet that goes from left to right, you punch out holes where we want to play our piano to play itself. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look it up on YouTube. Um, and this is also often called, I think, piano roll in a lot of other editors. Cubase just wants to be different and calls it a key editor. And you can actually find this under the MIDI menu up here. And just open up the key editor. Some of you, however, this might be seem really foreign, and I do suggest you get used to working with it because this this way of, of working is so valuable and so easy, and uh, you know it, it just it's a little bit of a new language at first if you're not used to reading music this way. But it's easily the most editable and configurable inside of a sequencer, and I think it is the dominant, basically among all major sequencers now, is to look at your MIDI data like this. However, if you insist, you can look at it. Uh, as if it was a musical score. And the score editor is control R for the quick key. And you do have to set this up, I think, uh, if it'll normally look something like this, which is just, or actually no, it'll be uh, monophonic usually. I think Cubase tries to put it in. Might not even try it this time. Single, how about this? Uh, it usually looks like something like this, which is completely in unreadable and is terrible. Make sure you switch uh, your uh, staff to something that will um, you know, be actually representative of what the music is. So now we can just play. But even then, it's still kind of messy because of all these ties. Uh, this isn't necessarily exactly how someone would write uh, the music out to play this. Uh, instead, right, they would just say, use some sustain pedal here, right, instead of just tying all of these notes. So again, even, you know, again, working with traditional sheet music isn't really great inside of a sequencer because so often when you have an acoustic performer, they'll do things that aren't on the page that are completely idiomatic, and it's very hard to actually notate them here. In addition, sometimes, you know, Cubase gets very confused. Well, is this a, is this a G sharp or an A flat? Well, clearly it's an A flat. Look at all the flats around it. Um, but it just looks like an eyesore. So I generally avoid this. We can change it. I mean, I can force that to be an A flat if I want to. Um, but for, quite frankly, I'll go use Finale. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of that program, but if you're interested in producing high quality sheet music, um, Finale has sort of been around the longest. It is sort of the gold standard. Uh, I haven't decided if I'm going to do tutorial videos on how to use Finale yet. Um, probably not. I'm leaning towards no right now. But if you are interested, you know, leave me a few comments on the YouTube feed and I'll, uh, I'll consider doing some Finale demos as well. Um, I did work as a music copyist for a few years uh, during college and grad school. So, um, I mean, many of you out there probably don't read this very well. I do. I read this extremely well, and uh, you know, I still choose not to use it. Let's say that, <laughs> at least inside of Cubase. Uh, another thing that we have, I should have showed you probably a few tutorials ago when we were working with drums, and I was telling you guys about, you know, do you guys know your actual general MIDI? Well, Cubase actually tells you if you if you open up your MIDI as a drum editor. It actually lists all of the 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 general MIDI drum maps right here. Uh, you can actually see that it's, uh, you can load other drum maps into it as well if you make them. And uh, it's kind of a weird way to work um, because this is whoops, close that. Sorry, uh, this is a weird thing to work because you can see none of the notes have lengths; they're just events, uh, which is. Uh, you know, I can't make this longer or shorter, but this is how percussion works if you think about it, right? When you hit a drum, you're not actually letting the drum go. The drum stops whenever the drum stops. So this is the major drawback to working with the drum editor is that it's designed for drums. It's designed for one-shot kind of samples. In other words, samples that are going to fire and then forget. They're not going to sustain for a length of time. They're just going to turn on and play till they run out. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's... It's useful for drums. I probably wouldn't use it for a keyboard patch like this, uh, although we can play it and listen to it. All right, and it kind of makes sense. You can kind of follow along here. Um, but again, everything is sort of in the weird, very strange places. It's kind of mapped out how a drum might be mapped out. You can actually see like your bass drum is actually here at the top, um, which again, just doesn't make it. I mean, you can't read this like music. It doesn't go like low frequencies to high frequencies. They tried to map it out like a drum. Um, so that's another option for you. Uh, one, you know, last, or actually, no, there's two last options. Um, let's do the list editor first. And this is sort of a classic, I don't mean classic, I mean, you know, 1985 way of looking at MIDI data, um, where it's basically just a list of every single event that happens. 
And Cubase actually has this nice little graphical display. Often you wouldn't see the, even see this part. You'd just be looking at this part. Um, and it would just be a list of you know every note and its start time and end time. Uh, Cubase actually sort of shows you when things happen in terms of time and how long they go on for. And it color codes it according to velocity. So you can kind of get a feeling for how this works. Uh, let's play it and you can watch it scroll in this, editor, in this version of the editor. So in general, I uh, almost never use this, There's, with one exception being that if something goes really horribly wrong with your MIDI and something is getting some sort of MIDI command and you can't figure out what it is or where it is, um, this will just list every single MIDI command you have and you can sort of look through it that way if it's not showing up in one of the other views for some reason. Uh, but really, uh, I would say unless you're working with MIDI in the 1980s and you're really comfortable with working it this way, uh, you only use this for troubleshooting and nothing more. I would avoid this screen if at all possible. All right, the last way to edit it, uh, you can actually open it um, from this little button here or up here. Uh, but this is the in place editor. and. It just makes that same MIDI piano roll appear in your project window. Um, this is both great and terrible. Number one, if you do this to all your tracks, it'll just make your tracks really huge and your project actually kind of cumbersome. I kind of like it being compartmentalized a fair degree. Um, when this is off, and I can actually just go in here and edit this. Uh, but sometimes, you know, you really just want to see what's going on in your MIDI along with an audio track, and this is probably the best way to do it. Um, we just click this little. Uh, to me, it looks like a little bottom half of an envelope or something. And you just open it, and you can actually edit it and change your music right from here. So I can move that note up there. It's that really high one. Uh, so you can just edit it in place as well. And uh, you know, a lot of my students at the college, I forget to tell them this, and they uh, <laughs> they're just so amazed when they go, "Wait, what? You can do that?" And it just rocks their little brains. So I want to make sure I want to tell you guys about it, um, so you know that it's an option. And I use this on occasion. You know, it's not like I never use this one. I would say of these editors that we have up here, um, I use the key editor. You know, 98% of the time, the drum editor maybe 1%, the list editor maybe you know 0.1%, and whatever's left is this in place editor. So, you know, these are all good tools for you. They're all just different ways to view the same data. Remember, this is just data we're talking about. There's no actual audio here. Um, if you don't forget that, you should be okay. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.